In the previous videos, I've been teaching you how to use calorimetry data to calculate the delta H or change in enthalpy for a reaction. In this video, I'm going to teach you another method that we use to calculate delta H, and this method is called Hess's Law. Now, I have found from experience that it is easier for me to explain Hess's Law while we are actively doing a Hess's Law problem. So we're just going to jump right into this problem, solve it, and I'm going to explain what we're doing along the way. In the Hess's Law problems, you are always going to be given a target equation, a chemical reaction. In this case, it's C4H4 gas plus 2H2 gas makes C4H8. And our goal is to calculate the delta H for this reaction. In addition to being given this target equation, we're also going to be given a series of additional chemical reactions. And all of these chemical reactions will have delta H values associated with them. We are going to be using all of these provided chemical equations as well as their delta H values to calculate the delta H for this target reaction. Every one of the reactants or products in our target equation is going to be featured in one of these um, provided equations. So the first thing that we need to do is find each one of these reactants and products in the target equations. I'm going to do that to start. So the first thing that I'm focusing on is the first molecule in the reaction, which is C4H4. I'm looking at all of these reactions, and um, normally only one of them is going to contain the C4H4 molecule. We do want to make sure that we're matching up the state. So we're not just looking for C4H4, we're looking for C4H4 gas. And we can see that C4H4 gas is a reactant in the very first equation that we're looking at. So we have found that guy. Now we want to find the second reactant in this equation, H2 gas. It may not have the exact same stoichiometry, and that doesn't matter. We'll fix that if it doesn't. We're just specifically looking for H2 gas. So as we look through all of these chemical reactions, we're looking for H2 gas. Here it is right here. So let's highlight it. I'm not going to highlight the stoichiometry, just the molecule itself, H2 gas, so we know where it's located. And then last but not least, our product C4H8. We're looking again at all of these reactions. We're looking for C4H8 gas. We need to make sure that it's also gas. Here's our C4H8 molecule. So what we have done so far is found all of the reactants and the product for our target equation. Now what we want to do is take these three provided equations and we want to manipulate them as needed so that our target molecules match up in the two reactions, our target reaction as well as our provided reaction. Each molecule matches up in terms of having the same stoichiometry and also being located on the same side of the reaction arrow. So what about, I mean by that is that in our target reaction, we have one C4H4 gas molecule, and it is on the left side of the reaction arrow. So in the provided chemical reaction, our C4H4 molecule needs to have the same stoichiometry, one, and it needs to be on the same side of the chemical uh, reaction arrow. And in this case, it is. Our C4H4 gas molecule has the right stoichiometry and it's in the right direction. And in that case, when it matches up perfectly, what we're going to do is just copy that equation. C4H4 gas plus 5O2 gas as you get some more practice with these, you may not need to copy these equations as much. But in order to make your first example easier, we're, I'm going to copy all of them. So I've caught this equation copied down. And since I copied this equation perfectly, I didn't make any changes to it at all. I didn't change the stoichiometry. I didn't change the direction. I'm also going to copy the delta H value exactly the same way. I'm not going to make any changes to delta H. I'm going to go ahead and leave the units off just for simplicity. So what we have done, again, is taken this equation and made sure that C4H4 matched up with our target equation um, in terms of which side of the arrow it's on and how many we have. And so now let's move on to equation number two. Equation number two features our C4H8 gas molecule. In our target reaction, C4H8 gas is on the product side. So what we need to do is manipulate this provided equation so that the C4H8 
8 molecule in the provided equation matches up with our target equation. Instead of being on the left-hand side of the arrow, we need this C4H8 molecule to be on the right-hand side of the arrow. Now, we can't just simply take this molecule and just write it over here on this side. That would be an unbalanced equation and also totally illogical. But what we can do is turn this whole equation around. So we can make these guys the reactants and we can make these guys the products. That's definitely a valid move and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to write this reaction backwards. 4CO2 gas plus 4H2O liquid, which are the products of reaction number two. And we're going to show them making C4H8 gas and 6O2 gas. Doing this, turning this equation around, puts the C4H8 gas in the correct side, on the correct side of our balanced equation. It's been a while since I've talked about this, but if you change the direction of a chemical reaction, if instead of going from left to right, it goes from right to left, the delta H value needs to be changed as well, and it's changed in terms of the sign. So if we reverse the direction of a chemical reaction, we also have to swap the value of the sign of delta H. So the delta H for the backwards reaction is going to be positive 2755 instead of negative 2755. Now, last but not least, um, we have this equation right here, which features our H2 gas. We want to match it up with, with the H2 gas in our overall equation. So first of all, we want to match up the stoichiometry. Our target equation has two H2 molecules, and our provided equation has two H2 molecules as well. So the stoichiometry matches perfectly. We also want to make sure that these two H2 molecules are on the same side of the reaction arrow, and for both of these equations, they are on the left side of the arrow. So that means that this equation, as it is written, is putting our two H2 gas molecules in the right spot and also in the right quantity. Because our provided equation, 2H2 gas plus O2 gas makes 2H2O liquid, because this provided equation has our H2 gas molecule in the right spot, in the right amount. We don't change the equation, and we also don't change the value of delta H. It is negative 571.6. So we have, what we've done so far is rewritten these three equations, making sure that these molecules are all in the right spot. I'm going to highlight those molecules again just to make it easier for us to see them. So there's our C4H4 gas, there's our C4H8 gas, and there's our 2H2 gas. So what we're gonna do now is literally add these up the way that we would add up numbers in a math problem. And as we're adding these three molecules together, we're gonna simplify anything that appears on the left side and the right side of an arrow. When we add all of these equations up, we're gonna get one big giant overall chemical reaction. All six of these molecules will be the reactants in that chemical reaction, and all five of these molecules will be the products of that chemical reaction. So it's gonna be a really huge chemical reaction. And if we can simplify it in any way before we copy it down, that would be ideal. So what I'm doing right now is looking for molecules that appear on the left side of any one of these three reactions and also appear on the right side of any one of these three reactions. They don't have to coincide. They don't have to be in the same reaction. For example, I see that I have four CO2 gas on the left side of reaction number two, and I have four CO2 gas on the right side of reaction number one, and I can actually cancel those out. Just cross them out. They cancel each other out. What else can we cancel out? I see that I have four water molecules on the left side of reaction number two, and I have a total of four water molecules on the right-hand side of reactions one and three. So I can cross out the water molecules as well. And also I can see that I have a total of six O2 molecules on the left side of reactions one and three, and I have a total of six O2 molecules on the right side of reaction number two. So I can cancel those out as well. And when I get all of these things canceled out, 
all that I have left that I'm looking at here is C4H4 gas plus 2H2 gas, making C4H8 gas, which is my target reaction. The delta H for this reaction is going to be the sum of these provided values of delta H, which works out to be, if my calculations are correct, negative 157.6 kilojoules per mole. And there is an example of how to use Hess's law to calculate delta H. Now, this is something that you probably want to see more than one time. So in the next video, I'm going to do another Hess's law example almost exactly like this one.